Good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world. Did you know that Godot allows you to create libraries of functions for shaders that you can later link to your shading language script without the need to copy and paste their code every time? We'll demonstrate this with a few simple examples, and then we'll apply this knowledge to create another shader effect using the polar coordinates. As we know, creating visual shaders using graphs is a lot of fun, but for more complex ones, it definitely pays off to know the shading language, which allows us to write much shorter and probably more concise code than what the graph generates for us. To further streamline our work, we'll use a shader preprocessor, specifically its directive include. Let me demonstrate the usage of this concept on one of our previously created shaders. Perhaps you remember the symmetrical ornament that we created in one of the previous videos using a visual shader. In the meantime, I rewritten this shader into code and published it on the Godot, shader, Godot Shaders website, where you can find it and use it in your own project as you like. The link should be provided in the description of this video. So I just copied the shader code from my Godot shaders page and pasted it into a new shader attached to the material in this scene. So it looks exactly like before. Maybe some parameters are different because the animation is slower and perhaps the color palette is not exactly as it was in the visual one, but it doesn't matter. Let's take a look at that. Let me uh, enlarge it a little bit. We have uh, three functions, palette, rotate, and invert color here. It can be assumed that they might come in handy in other shaders as well. So we'll now move them to a newly created library file, which will have the extension gdshaderinc. Let's right click on our shader folder, create new resource and find shader include that should be it yeah precisely i'll call it for example functions and create great now i will open the resource here it is and copy uh, the mentioned functions into this file let's select them Control c Control v Control S to save. Note that unlike shaders, we don't need to specify shader type or any other headers here. Just the code itself is sufficient. So the only thing left is to add the include directive to the original shader and remove the functions we moved. Let's do it by removing the uh, functions. Sorry, I lost focus. There it is. And now it shows error, of course, because they are no longer here. We need to include them. Include. And it's autocomplete is our friend. We can simply use this and everything should be fine, hopefully. OK, it's supposed to be without brackets, just include and the path. And now everything works. If we check out the shader, we can see that everything is still OK, while our shader code has been shortened. Of course, the preprocessor will insert everything from the attached library during the compilation phase, but that's no longer our concern. And to create something new in this video, we'll add a few more useful functions to the library. We can start with the conversion to polar coordinates and back. By the way, as you can see here, I already have version 4.1.3, which was released yesterday. I'm trying to ensure that the code in every video is tested on the latest stable version of the Godot engine. So let's say a few words about the polar coordinates. Uh, as we know, the typical coordinates we use in our shaders most frequently are the Cartesian ones, which is basically the X and Y coordinate, and we also um, use them as UV. On the other hand, the polar coordinates are based on an origin, 
and then every point is defined by the distance from this origin and the angle between this line and the baseline, which is usually the x-axis. There are simple formulas to convert from the polar back to Cartesian coordinates, you can see it here, or vice versa, from Cartesian to polar. And these formulas is what we will implement in our library. Let's switch back to Godot and do it. I will call it, for example, it will return vector 2 to polar and we have some UV coordinates and let's do this. So first we want to center it because the for the effects it's best if the origin is in the center of our texture. So let's call it centered UV is UV and we'll subtract just point half. Okay, and now we will return the converted value back to and now we need the distance so it would be simply length of the centered UV and the angle as we could observe on this page it is called 8 and 2 which is basically arcos tangent but uh, of this fraction and with some additional conditions to return value between minus pi and pi so luckily it is already implemented in the shading language we can simply write a ton and the arguments would be centered uh, yeah of course this is not gd script i need to specify the type back to now it should the error should be gone and this is not a JD script, sorry. Brackets, uh, curly brackets, that's better. Uh, UV, Y, and centered UV. Now the code completion works. Good. I think this is everything we need for the coordinates conversion. But what does it mean in practice? We'll demonstrate it right away with a new shader. I'll name it Chessboard GD Shader because we'll start with a regular black and white chessboard pattern. Okay, so I created a new scene with a Sprite 2D and attached a new recreated material which is bound to a blank a new shader code here. We will generate the chessboard pattern here and after that uh, I will apply the polar coordinates and show some nice looking effects. Let's start with a little array defining the coordinates because we'll need that after the library is linked and used. And the final color would be float. Let's start with uh, solid black. And finally, we must assign that to the internal variable color in capital letters, color one. Okay, uh, for some reason, this shortcut doesn't work here. Let's do it the old fashioned way. Nice, very well. So how we can create a ch um, alternative, alternative, um, a chessboard pattern with black and white squares. Let me open something which is very useful here and it's a Desmos com site which allows us to create graphs and observe uh, the changes uh, while we modify the formula. So first we work with X which is just an X coordinates of our UV and we know that UV range is from 0 to 1. So to get some meaningful uh, values, we will first multiply that by the number of squares, which would be in each rank and file, and it's eight for a standard chessboard. Now we want to take the integer part of that because X is uh, uh, just in the range and there's a lot of uh, from decimal numbers. So four of the eight X, and we can see already that it is more discrete here. 
it's from 0 to 1 we have 8 values 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 but it's not exactly what we want the trick is that we will take a fraction part of that and i think it's not um, entirely possible in this tool or i don't know how to do that to apply a fraction function so i'll just subtract this from uh, the original value and first we need to do this uh, because we want to have uh, zero and some uh, positive number first i will multiply that by 0 0.5 which is basically i am dividing that by 2 and i'll take another floor function which means that for mm, even or odd i'm not sure i suppose even it would be zero and for odd numbers it would be 0.5 and as i said we need to subtract that from the original value which is this one i hope copy and paste to work here works here yeah very nice now we have it here and we want to convert that to colors which are from 0 to 1 so let's multiply the result by 2 and yeah of course we need to multiply the whole result so let's add another pair of brackets that's perfect can you see from 0 to 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 this is exactly what we need to generate our chessboard let's do it here so instead of float color is zero we'll apply this formula it would be and of course uh, one more thing this is only for the x coordinate we also need to uh, calculate it for the y coordinate but basically we will just add these two values and use the same multiplication to get the chessboard let me show you fract uh, floor uvx my 8 okay now we add the y coordinate part floor uv y by 8 and finally 1 2 it's multiplied by 0.5 divided by 2 and yeah we already have the chessboard but as we can see it's from black to gray we want from black to white so let's multiply that by 2 and the perfect chessboard should be here great by the way why chessboards it's a nice and regular shape and i enjoy playing chess i even have a chess channel on youtube but that's not relevant right now in the polar coordinates quite interesting shapes will be formed let's see what happens if we just apply the polar coordinates as they are thanks to the library we created it will be very simple first we'll include the library include okay and now we will simply use the function to polar which is here and observe the result yeah it's circular the pattern changed to circular but something on the left side isn't quite right it doesn't connect because the angle of polar coordinates ranges from minus pi to pi which is not a whole number uh, to achieve the expected result it should be sufficient to divide this value by pi let's try it out so uh, it would be uv dot y is result of division by pi that's better uh, maybe the distorted squares are too small let's try tau instead which is just twice pi the whole circle very nice this always looks better but what if we added our usual set of uniform parameters and animated this pattern right away let's do it i start with a number of squares which is now eight but it can be any other number so 
uniform float squares and we'll add a hint range from we would like to have at least one square so one to let's say 64 and um, this type is one and the initial value would be eight okay this is the first one now we want to zoom it in and out uniform float zoom again in range and let's say the initial value could be 0.1 the maximum 10 and the step 0.1 which is fine and let's start with 2 as a zoom factor and last one uniform float speed we will animating that and we want to change the pace of rotating uh, hint range again let's start with zero so we have a chance to uh, stop the animation totally uh, four and some more granular uh, step and start at point one because the standard time is usually much faster and the um, rotating pattern could be somehow hypnotic so <laughs> let's uh, play it on the safe side very well this is the this is the set of um, uniform parameters which we can already see here in the inspector and now we will improve our code so first um, the u v coordinate y the angle would be uh, i think we do it this way uv y um, plus time multiplied by speed eh, speed yeah right works it rotates but this is just a speed how about number of squares and the zoom so first we can replace these eights by squares here and here okay as for the zoom we'll simply multiply it by the zoom factor as again just like in our previous videos uh, the bigger the zoom factor is the smaller the pattern would be so it's actually i would say a reciprocal of zoom all right let's play with the parameters uh -huh. more uh, zoom yeah up down yeah you can see that uh, as the number is not a whole number it's not integer uh, the pattern still doesn't connect correctly but any whole number should be fine 10 yeah it's perfect great and the speed of course and make it faster <laughs> let's stop it completely good i'll keep it at a stop just to make sure that the video is not too uh, unpleasant for your eyes all right let's change it in an even more interesting way first i will add the x coordinate to the y coordinates to give it some kind of a swirl effect uv x plus uh-huh and to make it even more interesting let's replace floor with uh, trigonometric functions let's get sine here and cosine there and of course using trigonometric functions has caused the pattern to once again not connect at the polar origin we can easily fix that by multiplying the zoom by the number pi let's do it here uh no, no no we cannot change the uniform so we do it here multiplied by pi and this is more important of course it, we could have omitted it here now it's great let's start it again very interesting of course you can experiment with these functions add more of them or try original combinations and it's possible to apply similar transformations on to the texture 
we have only a black texture here, but you can have any other texture and create, for example, a black hole effect. But that's a topic for another time. That should be enough for this time. We've demonstrated how to create function libraries and how to utilize the polar coordinates to create interesting effects. Next time, we can expand our library with additional useful elements. For now, take care and good luck with shader creation.